Good morning, everybody. This is Brett with Garter's Done Right. Hope you're doing well. So I wanted to do a video. This will probably be unedited, so forgive me if there's uh, any duplications of information or a stutter or anything silly like that. But I want to do a quick video today on brumating garter snakes. Now, I'm going to give you the disclaimer that I always give you guys, which is I'm not an expert. And I mean that very humbly. All the information that I'm about to share with you now and all the information that generally I share with you is a combination of information I've learned from other people, right? Because I have this tremendous group of friends that are, are garter experts and have way more experience than I have. And then some of it's coming from experience of my own that might help color the picture a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna give you a bunch of directional information, okay? It's directional because brumating garter snakes has a lot to do with the specific species that you're dealing with, okay? So we're gonna talk in some generality, so bear with me. Let's start first with um, how to know when it's time. Now, right now, just to give you a point of reference, we're, this is mid-September, and uh, daylight's getting shorter, of course, and temperatures are coming down, and our animals sense all of that, okay? So the indications that you might see in your collection, like I'm seeing already, is the first thing I see is males go off feet. Now, it may not be all of your males because some are just more voracious than others, but when you start to see your males start to slow down, eat less, refuse meals, they start to hide, bury up more, things like that, those are all natural signs that it's just brumating season, okay? So don't panic. That's the first thing. Don't panic. What you shouldn't do is, is think, oh no, my, my snake's going to die and I, I'm now I'm going to force feed it. <laughs> Please, think about the situation and what the the animal is sensing and what it's trying to do. So what it's sensing is, oh wait, the temperature's coming down. I better not eat because if I eat and then all of a sudden it's winter, I could die because I can't digest my food, right? That's mother nature taking over and giving them the instincts to say, hey, it's time to time to maybe stop eating, right? And oh, you, oh by the way, you better go find a place to hide and bury up, okay? That's what mother nature is telling that animal at this point, so recognize that, okay? So I look for those indications. Those indications have been uh, been happening for me for the last uh, week or two with some of my animals starting to really slow down again, especially the males. Okay, next let's go to equipment for cooling. Now, your situation might be different, right? So, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, maybe you have a basement that gets cold enough, maybe you have a room that you, that you can leave unheated, or you can turn the temperature way down in that in that room. Maybe you've got a shed that uh, is insulated well enough that it won't get too cold. But for most of us, we're going to use some piece of equipment like a refrigerator or a wine cooler. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Now, I will admit, this can be a little bit scary. Another disclaimer, guys, you can lose snakes through the brumation process. Okay. You need to know that. That is a possibility. Okay. Um, it's not typically a large percentage. In fact, um, shout out to Stephen Bowl. If you're not familiar with him, check out his website. Um, Stephen Bowl has done a tremendous job of documenting a lot of these uh, behavioral kinds of things around garter snakes. And, and he has a, a really good write-up about uh, how to brumate garter snakes and what to expect. And he's kept really good records on how many he's lost over the years. You know, I put 20 animals into brumation and one passed or things like that. So check that out. But there's a disclaimer, right? There's some there's some risk here, okay? So we use a combination of uh, three different units. One is a full-size refrigerator. One is a small, like compact, I think it's like a four square foot, cubic foot kind of um, refrigerator. And then we use a wine cooler. There's pros and cons to both. The wine coolers typically don't get cold enough for some species. And you got to be careful with refrigerators because they can easily get too cold, okay? So you want to make sure that you've got temperature settings that you can adjust. Uh, one other quick tip, this is something that I do. Uh, I should have I should have thought to grab one, but they make these little digital, they're about this big, little digital thermometer that has a, a wire coming out of it with a probe. I would get those. I have those in every one of my units. So the digital part goes on the outside, then you run the wire through, and I just tape it on the inside of the... Um, of the refrigerator and monitor the temperature of that unit. I I run it for a couple of weeks before I even think about putting a snake in it. Make sure that that refrigerator is staying in a range that's safe for the snake because they cycle, right? It, it might 
it might warm up to like 46 and then it will turn on, the compressor will turn on and then it might cool down to like 38 and then slowly the temperature will rise and the compressor comes on, right? Know that that's how these things work, okay? They don't, most of them don't hold a perfect temperature uh, forever. So monitor that. Do, all I do is put the, put the probe on there and I just randomly check it and I write down the temperatures that I've seen for a couple of weeks. As long as that's within a safe range, then I feel good. And if not, then I, I dial in the temperatures a little bit more and make sure I get it into a into an area where I feel it's safe. Okay, not it won't get too cold and it won't get, it won't stay so warm that they just don't go into full brumation. All right, so that's the equipment as far as wine coolers and refrigerators. <clears throat> Let's talk about containers. We use three different sizes. And bear with me, guys. My allergies are terrible. So. Um, Three different size containers. This is the smallest one, okay? You see there's holes in it, okay? You just use a soldering iron for that. This is a, what's it called? It's a Rubbermaid take-along, okay? This particular one is 2.77 liters, just under three liters, okay? In this, we would typically put maybe one medium size female, uh, two smaller males, something like that. If they were babies, you could put multiple, okay? But this size is, is good for smaller snakes. The next size, and I've got some stuff in here so I can't turn it upside down. Also Rubbermaid uh, take along. This one is about 4.4 liters or 1.1 gallon. This is big enough for um, maybe one medium to large female, two or three um, small to medium males, that sort of thing, okay? And then finally, you've seen these before. We use these Sterilite gasketed um, tubs as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. By the way, let me uh, make a quick note. If you see garter snakes in the background in tubs here, uh, you know one of two things. They're either in quarantine or they're babies that we haven't moved to uh, permanent tanks yet. Okay. I want to do a video on that specifically. We're big believers that um, behaviorally you get better results from raising uh, garter snakes in enclosures where they've got a really good view, like a, um, a 20 gallon long or a 40 breeder where they've got a lot of glass, a lot of open. We believe behaviorally they, they grow up a little more calm than if they're raised too long in tubs. I know that's really controversial, controversial, so we'll we'll say that for another day. But again, I just wanted to point out, if you see tubs, quarantine or babies, one or the other, or we're brumating, okay? So that bigger um, tub, that's what I would put full size. You know, we've got um, female plains garters that are, you know, approaching 40 inches long. We'll put three big females into that and brumate them together, okay? All right, so we've covered, <clears throat> excuse me, the cooling equipment, the containers. Let's go a little bit more into how to set these up. All right, so this is the medium size one, right? So I'm gonna tilt it a little bit. What you're seeing is we use dry Aspen chip bedding. You, um, We prefer to keep everything dry. Um, wanna be cautious here because there are some folks out there that, that believe that keeping it moist is better. So I don't wanna get into that controversy. Our opinion is dry is better. Okay, to avoid um, sores and so, things like that. Okay, so we keep this dry. You have to you have to give them water. They are going to drink. Okay, so their metabolism is going to go way down. They're still going to move around. They're still going to be alive. They still need to hydrate. Okay, they can go months without eating, but they can't go months without drinking. Okay, so water dish, substrate. You want to put enough substrate in there that they can bury up. That's the key. They want to hide. They want to. They want to get under stuff. And that's why uh, this is a, a, something we've added recently. That's why we put a piece of cardboard in there. The only purpose for the piece of cardboard is for them to get underneath something, right? So it's acting like a board or, or a flat rock, something that they can get underneath and feel secure. And uh, the other benefit is it helps block some of the light. Let's talk about that for a minute. So the interior lights in these refrigerators and wine coolers, the wine coolers are generally pretty dark inside, so it's not, a, not that big of a deal. But man, you open up the doors on any modern refrigerator and it's like uh, really bright, right? Bright LED lights. So what we do now, and we didn't think about it the first uh, first time around, is we cover up those internal lights. 
so that it stays as dark as it can stay because you're going to be in and out of that checking water uh, we like to check on the snakes every every week or so make sure that they're okay check the substrate make sure it's not all wet and damp if, if so you need to change that things like that okay so cover the lights i think it's a good idea but this cardboard helps keep it dark as well we're trying to interrupt them as little as possible right you want them to get in there settle down and take a long nap that's the whole thing and, and the process of doing that just helps their body recycle and get ready for the following season this is an important step for breeding right typically females when they come out of brumation and we warm them back up and they start to feed that will trigger trigger an ovulation cycle that's what we need to, to make you know baby garter snakes so this is a pretty critical step so again uh, we've talked about the equipment we've talked about the uh, containers and how to set those up so um, one other thing i want to get into a little bit and just make sure that it's clear remember these garters come from all over North America and even even Mexico. Okay, so brumation to uh, to a Marcianus or a checkered garter snake from Texas is different than brumation for an Eastern that came from Canada, right? Keep that in mind, right? You want to think about the species or subspecies that you're working with and what their natural environment would be. Right? So you're looking to do a brumation cycle that's somewhere between 60 and 120 days long, typically, and ranging somewhere from the high 30s to maybe the high 40s in terms of temperature. Um, you want to try to match that to what their natural environment would be. OK, so guys, again, not an expert. This is what I've learned from other people. This is the way we do it. We're getting ready to put a bunch of snakes into cooling. Uh, good luck in your season. Please, if you have comments and questions, include them. We want to hear it. This is how we all learn together. So if you don't agree with something that we said, that's okay. Let's just not call each other names, but share your thoughts. If you disagree, say you disagree and why. And that's, again, how people will gather this information, sort through it all, and figure out what's best for, for you and for others. Okay? Thanks for your support. Please like and subscribe to uh, all of our social, you know, YouTube Facebook, everywhere we can, if you would please, that helps us a lot. Thanks. Bye.